In order to analyze a gene or transfer it to another organism, the gene must first be located and isolated. So, for instance, if we wanted to transfer a human gene for a uh, growth hormone to a bacteria, we must first find the human gene that encodes growth hormone and then separate it from the 3.2 billion base pairs that are in human DNA. So a gene library is just a collection of clones that contains all of the DNA fragments from one source. So we are going to put, let's just put collection of clones. Clones with all DNA fragments from one source. Okay, so say we wanted to isolate genomic DNA from human cells, we would break it into fragments, insert those fragments into vectors, clone them in bacterial cells, and then this set of bacterial colonies uh, containing these fragments is the human genomic library. So this would contain all the genes from that uh, sequence. So it would contain the, all the DNA sequences found in that one person's genome. So in order to create a genomic library, the cells are first disrupted. Well, I'm going to illustrate all this in a second, but I first wanted to get the, the process down. So the cells would be collected and disrupted, and this would cause them to release their DNA um, and other cellular components, obviously, into an aqueous solution. The DNA would then be extracted from the solution using various lab techniques. And after it's been isolated, it would be cut into fragments by restriction enzymes or endonucleases uh, for a limited amount of time. So this is just called a partial digestion. Um, so that only some of the restriction sites in the DNA molecule are cut, so not all of them. And because the cutting of the sites is random, different DNA molecules will be cut in different places and a set of overlapping fragments will be produced. The fragments are then joined into vectors, which are just plasmids, which then can be transferred to bacteria. Um, a few of the clones contain the entire gene of interest, uh, if the gene's not too large, obviously, and then a few contain parts of the gene, but most contain fragments that have no part of the gene of interest. So the gen genomic library must contain a large number of clones to ensure that all the DNA sequences in the genome are represented in the library. And like a library of a human genome formed using cosmids, each carrying a random DNA fragment from 35,000 to 44,000 base pairs long would require 350,000 cosmic clones to provide a 99% chance that every sequence is included in the library. So I'm just gonna, let's illustrate this whole process right here. So say we had, uh, this might be a little bit difficult, we're going to draw a little graph here. So if we had a long piece of DNA like this, and we'll do a little double-stranded one, so it's like that. You have this long piece of DNA, and let's say that we have restriction sites right here, 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 uh, down here, 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 right there, one right there, and just kind of all throughout this sequence of DNA. But the DNA that, or the gene that you're interested in is located, let's say, right here. This is your gene that you're interested in. So this is the only part that you actually want. And so what you're going to do is multiple copies of genomic DNA are digested, so by restriction enzyme for a limited time, as I mentioned before, so that only some of the restriction sites are cut. So you're going to get something that looks like you're going to have one piece that's like this, right? And then you're going to have one that's like this, that's long, and you're going to have one that's here. And then you're going to have a few that actually contain your gene of interest. And you're going to have a few that contain only a part of your gene of interest. And you're going to have a few, or bunch, most, most of your gene from the human DNA obviously would contain no parts of your gene of interest. It'd just be all over the place and surrounding it and not even close to it. So obviously you get some that just kind of cut it off like this right here, some that contain the entire thing and more, and some that cut it off this side or just halfway. You're going to get a ton depending on what the restriction enzymes look like. So each fragment of this DNA would then be joined into a cloning vector. So a cloning vector, as I mentioned before, is just a plasmid, which is just a circle. So we have a bunch of these different circles, let's say, 
and these are all our cloning vectors right here, and our gene of interest is in blue. So we'll draw it in blue. So some of them will contain our gene of interest if we just color this in like this. Some will contain only a part of it, so just a tiny little bit in that one, and then a tiny little bit. We're going to do a full one in this one too. So there's our gene of interest fully there. And let's say that the rest of the DNA that we didn't want is, uh, is uh, red or something like that. The rest of this, or yeah, so let's say a little piece of it's here, and then the rest is here. So these are all different fragments. All of these different fragments like this one, and this one, and these ones down here, they're all in these cloning vectors, and they contain no, none of the gene of interest. So each one of these is then transferred into a bacterial cell. So if we draw a little flask right here, really bad, terrible drawing of a flask, but a flask nonetheless. And we put a little aqueous solution in there. And then we have all of these little, let's do them in red, I guess, plasmids in here, tons of them, tons and tons and tons. Like I mentioned before, I think 350,000 we would need. So we would transfer these into bacterial cells uh, here, and we would produce a set of clones containing overlapping ge uh, genomic fragments, some of which may include the segments of the gene of interest. So we would transfer this thing right here into a cell culture. So let's do that big cell culture right here. And some of them, you know, you'd have a little cultural cells right here, let's say. You'd have a culture of cells right here, culture of cells right here, and all over this plate that you have growing the cells. So some of the clones will contain the entire gene of interest and others will include a part of the gene like uh, this one or this one and most of them will contain no none of the gene of interest. So here is a gene library. This is the entire set of the human genome uh, that is cloned into these vectors and then put into these bacterial cells and it contains the entire a uh, gene library of whatever human you have been cloning and only probably a tiny tiny fraction of this right here let's say has the gene of interest and that's how you do um, using molecular techniques to find whatever gene you're interested in and then perform more experiments on it after.